I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and today, as part of our equipment series, we're gonna do puppy equipment. Um, well, you know, because obviously I have puppies. So yeah, look out for the, in the following months for a few segments that are focusing primarily on puppy equipment. We are gonna give you all the ins and outs of what you might need before you have a litter, when your litter's first born, and probably up to about eight weeks of having a litter. Just different things that you may or may not have thought of and the things that are gonna make your puppies flourish and your life just a little bit easier when you have the adorable little gremlins around. So stay tuned for that. Before we get started on our puppy series, I just wanted to mention a few things. First of all, I'm not a veterinarian, right? And I don't play one on the internet. I am not trying to give you medical advice, veterinarian advice, anything like that. What I am here doing is I am giving you things that have worked for me in the past, things that I have found useful that are maybe you haven't heard of before, maybe you have, but just giving you different ideas. Maybe it's two o'clock in the morning where you are and you're Googling what to do with, you know, my sick puppy or is my puppy warm enough or how do I swaddle it so that I can get an accurate weight on it. That is what we are here for, right? We are here for to give you a smattering. This by no means is an exhaustive list or an, an exhaustive example of any of these stages, but we want to give people that are reputable breeders a place to start, a place to look for, a place to find resources. If you want to have more detailed information, we would love for you to have that too. And we have a full, very detailed course with weights, diagrams, measurements, videos, um, written synopsis that you can purchase on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy that goes into everything we talk about in our YouTube series in much, much more detail. We are here to help you you to help puppies, to help the reputable breeder out there. And we just want to provide you with some information and maybe a little bit of comfort um, until things are going absolutely right or until you are ready to whelp your first litter or maybe whelp your 100th litter. Um, so I just wanted to give you that little disclaimer before we hop to it. Now let's talk about what our puppies are doing from like around maybe one week of age till around four weeks of age. So for me, my puppies are still in their whelping box. They still have their vet bedding down. I'm changing it more often. Um, and I have now kind of created a little nest area for my dogs. So maybe that means I have a separate bed for them on top of their vet bedding. And I kind of start by all around it, I'm going to put some pee pads. And so hopefully if I go in and my puppies are waking up, I'm just gonna pick them up and put them on their pee pad. Puppies naturally want to keep their bed, their den clean. So we can start encouraging them to be like on a different texture that um, that's where they use the bathroom. Puppies typically really, really gravitate towards this. So probably at about three weeks of age, um, just after their eyes are opening and they're kind of getting around, I'm really kind of working on this. And I find anytime I wake them up um, and I put them on the pee pad, they kind of get, and they'll even maybe sometimes just put their two front feet or one front foot on the pee pad, but they are getting that idea in their head. Um, their mother maybe wants to spend some time in the whelping box with them and out of the whelping box with them uh, or without them. And that's perfectly fine. I make sure she has a nice bed. So I make sure that the, my whelping box is high enough that the mother can easily get out, but my puppies can't easily get out for those four weeks. And sometimes they surprise you at how fast they can get out of something. They're still under their heat lamp. Um, I still like that room to be warm, maybe not as warm as like the, as week one, but I still like to keep it warm. They're still wearing their puppy collars, but maybe now um, after about 10 days of age, I'm not necessarily weighing them every day unless I have a puppy that isn't thriving. You really do keep an eye on these collars because sometimes those puppies can grow much quicker than you anticipated. So that's why I like having kind of like several packages of these. These ones happen to come with like, you know, two cards of them of the same color in one package. So a couple of those is great. Um, I do like to do their nails about once a week, sometimes every four days if they're growing really, really quickly. And I just use human toenail clippers for that. I find that that's all I need. So super easy to use. I sit in the whelping box and do that. 
Um, around the time that their eyes are opening, so you know, 10 to 14 days, I like to put toys in the whelping box with them. Um, you'll find that some bitches are taking the toys out and playing with them themselves. I also like to rotate their toys. So I might have four toys in there one day and I just take them out, throw them in a basket, put four different ones, maybe one that squeaks, maybe one that crinkles, maybe a ball, you know, just different things. So that just kind of gives the puppies kind of something else to think about. Then as we get a little bit more to three and four weeks, sometimes as early as three weeks, I am going to start giving my puppies some goat's milk. So I might start with just like a little bit of warm goat's milk. I like to use a saucer. And then at, at about four weeks, I'm ready to move on to a glass pie plate. I love a glass pie plate because they're heavy. So the puppies can't tip them over. They're super easy to clean and disinfect. You can do anything to them. You're not going to scratch them. You're not going to hurt them. So I really, really like that. But realistically, from the time their eyes are opening until that four week part, just really making sure that they are introduced to different things. If you have somebody that you can trust that comes from a home where their dogs are vaccinated or maybe your own kids, grandkids, brothers, sisters, whatever, if any time that they want to wash their hands, take off their shoes, come into my whelping room and sit there with puppies, it's good for them to get used to different noise noises, the voices of different people. Um, I really think the different textures is key. So again, closer to four weeks, I am going to be moving those pee pads that were around their nest, their extra bed, um, to another part of the whelping box and encouraging them to go over there to use the washroom. And typically they do this like quite quickly by themselves. When you give puppies the option and a different texture for their feet, it works really well. I like to also introduce classical music to my puppies and that can be easy. It can be like a Google speaker. It can be a laptop, a computer. You can find lots of great noises, lots of great classical music, long running music on YouTube, any place like that. And I find that super, super useful for my puppies. Um, the other thing you need to watch out for is kind of like, look at what your puppies look like in the whelping box, right? So as they hit kind of that 10 days when their eyes are starting to open, and you might look in and you might see all the puppies like really, really in a tight huddle, like most of the time that you walk in and look at them. And this could mean that your puppies maybe aren't quite as warm as they would like to be. They're trying to get the um, body heat from each other. So in which case I would either lower my heating lamp if it was high up, I might turn up a heating pad or turn up the heat in my room. And again, if my puppies are completely spread out all over the whelping box, maybe it's too warm, in which case I might turn up, you know, move the heat lamp up so it's further away. Um, I might turn down the heating pad or turn down the heat in my room if that's what I'm using. I like to see, you know, puppies maybe in loose groups of two to three. That to me, you know, maybe at the edge of where the heat lamp is or the edge of where the heating pad is, that maybe to me indicates my puppies are, you know, doing well, they're at the temperature that they are like. So really at this kind of transitional period of them being totally helpless, not being able to hear or see, to them being able to hear and see, you just want to be gentle with how you're introducing things to them. That's why my heat lamp might change from a clear bulb to a red bulb because it's easier on their eyes. That's why I might make sure there's classical music playing for them. Um, and if, you know, if I have a mom that's startling a lot, I might put a note on my door to delivery drivers asking them not to ring the doorbell you know not to knock on the door just like people with new babies might do i just want to keep that atmosphere really calm cool and collected for my puppies but spending as much time with your puppies as possible really really will pay off in the long run you start to see the ones that are developing different personalities um, keeping up with their toenails is a great way for them to have that individual attention and you're actually be surprised at how quickly their toenails do grow. So really it's a lot of common sense. It's a lot of just introducing our puppies to new things at this period, but in a very, very slow and methodical way. It's 
don't worry about really how your puppies react. Some puppies react very little to new noises. One of their brothers or sisters can step on a squeaky toy and they don't even notice. Other litters, a brother or sister will step on a squeaky toy and the whole litter kind of like freaks out. It's you, if they startle, you really just want them to recover as quickly as possible. And having you there guiding them along and making sure the mother is kept, um, you know, as calm, cool and collected as possible is really, really great. So um, at about three to four weeks when I start off, Offering them some goat's milk um, it kind of gets really really messy so you might want to like wipe down your puppy so they're not as smelly they don't smell like sour goat's milk sometimes I'll let their mother especially in the beginning of that like um, learning how to lap up a little bit of goat's milk I'll let the mother go in and kind of finish it up for them because it kind of teaches them how to lap things a little bit but beware of the mother that is an aggressive eater herself um, if you do have a mother that is an aggressive eater then you really want to make sure that she isn't anywhere near your puppies when they're having their food that she is completely away while they're offered their food and then is completely taken away anything that's spilt is is cleaned up so that she is not competing with her puppies in any way shape or form for food so Basically from the time their eyes open until about four weeks of age when you're starting to just introduce them to food Just make sure that they are gently Introduced to as many new things as possible and each puppy spends a couple minutes a day by itself That can be on your lap in the whelping box that can be on a chair in the same room um, Just you know a little bit of time by themselves is really going to help So if you want a little bit more detail about any of this, I'd love you to check out our course on weaning and raising puppies um, and if not take a look at some of our other YouTube I hope that that helped hey everyone thanks for watching today's video please leave us a comment below let us know what you thought and as well if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see you can put them down there as well you can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free premium and subscription content and we'd love to have you join us there as well don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.